A celebrity reveals her daughter's journey into and out of a deceptive cult disguised as a self-help organization. American actress Katherine Oxenberg faces the camera to share an experience that deeply affected her family. She describes how a seemingly ordinary neighborhood held a dark secret. Inside a house in Albany, her daughter became a part of a sorority, where she cried in pain as she underwent a branding ritual. In a reenactment set two years ago in Malibu, Katherine received an update from her agent regarding a script she wrote. Downstairs, her eldest daughter, India, took her cranberry crumblers from the oven, presenting them to her boyfriend, Lucas. When he suggested renewing her website for more sales, the baker felt frustrated, aware she didn't have many buyers. Suddenly, Catherine entered the kitchen, prompting her daughter to ask about the script. The actress updated her that no one was currently interested in her work. Upon hearing the news, India felt sorry for her mom. Suddenly, Catherine's other daughters, Remy and Francesca, entered the room, video calling their grandmother, Princess Elizabeth, whom they'll be seeing for a trip. Later, the girls headed out with their dad, Casper, the actress's second husband. Before leaving, he assured his wife to take care of the children. Noticing India's lousy mood that night, Catherine reminded her that starting a business could be challenging. The frustrated entrepreneur asked her mom how to cope with feeling lost. The actress advised her not to rush figuring things out. After her yoga class the following day, Catherine opened up to her friend Julian, admitting she had marriage and career problems. To help the actress, he invited her to the Nexium Group's executive success program the following weekend. Intrigued, she promised to show up at the seminar. Believing it could benefit her daughter, Catherine extended an invitation to India who initially hesitated but eventually agreed. During the seminar, the facilitator, Mark, explained that Keith Rainier created the program. Bonnie added that the program offered tools to promote success and correct unhelpful mindsets. Mark informed the audience about the first level workshop, comprising five classes priced at $2,400 per person. Upon hearing the high price, Julian promptly apologized to Catherine and India for not being aware of it. However, the teen felt optimistic and considered enrolling with her mom in class. Catherine and India met coach Sarah on their first day at the workshop. The woman informed them about Nancy Salzman, the co-founder who they must address as prefect during the class. When India asked about the colored sashes, the coach explained the stripe path, which is the group's ranking system. After a week, students could attain a white sash and progress to new colors as they advanced in the program, with gold representing the highest rank. Later, Nancy welcomed the participants on behalf of the founder, Keith Rainier, who they call Vanguard. She instructed everyone to complete their 12-point mission statement questionnaires. Catherine reacted to the inquiries finding them unrelated to business success. However, India thought they were intended to make them reflect on their lives. Suddenly, Sarah informed Catherine that she would separate her daughter to ensure an honest experience. This confused the actress as she watched the teen move to the back. Nancy introduced the first point, inciting everyone to repeat the statement about rejecting victimhood. Then, she asked participants to pledge to enroll others in ESP. Catherine immediately questioned the statement, asserting that she and her daughter did not sign up to be recruiters. However, Nancy pointed out that the actress had already agreed to it by signing the non-disclosure agreement. Hearing this, the participant was speechless, and her daughter chuckled behind her. During the next activity, Catherine suddenly fell asleep in her chair, prompting Nancy to call her attention. When the prefect attributed it to her defiance, the actress argued that it was unfair to be judged in that manner. In response, the co-founder reminded the participant that she should allow the group to address her issues. Arriving home, Catherine confided in her daughter that she didn't enjoy the workshop. She admitted disliking Nancy and noted how the group separated them. On the other hand, India didn't mind being with other groups. The teen admitted liking the program because it made her reflect on life. She advised her mom to participate since only one class was left. Taking the advice, Catherine raised her hand when Nancy asked for a volunteer the next day. Using the actress's answers on the questionnaire, the prefect explored her past, reminding her of her harmful dad and uncle who touched her inappropriately when she was young. Catherine soon acknowledged her fear of being abused, which showed in her relationships with unfaithful men and her paralysis toward audition directors. The co-founder commended her for finally recognizing and freeing herself from her fear. India watched her mom break down from her seat and later hugged her. Nancy then congratulated the actress and gave her a white sash. The following day, Casper worried for Catherine, who would be gone for two weeks to attend another Nexium workshop. When he attempted to dissuade her, the actress explained that she had to do it for herself and India. The next day, Catherine and India arrived at Bonnie and Mark's townhouse in Albany. That afternoon, they attended their first class where Alice explained the JNS program, which centered on female empowerment. India recognized the speaker as an actress who played Chloe in Smallville. The speaker shared how she used to be fearful of her life, but the program changed everything. She invited everyone to raise their hands as high as they could be. As everyone complied, the facilitator asked 
asked why no one stood up, and India answered that she didn't know. Allison explained that it was a result of having limited beliefs. After she motivated the participants to take control of their lives, everyone agreed and collapsed. After the class, Allison approached Catherine, pleased to see her as a participant. She also complimented India's beauty and borrowed her for a while for a private talk. India became curious about why Allison joined the group despite being in Hollywood. The former actress revealed that while her life looked perfect, she was living inauthentically. She shared how taking a class changed her life and enlightened her. India was convinced, wanting the same thing for herself. The coach held India's hand, revealing that she had Keith as her mentor. She hugged her, excited for her journey, advising her to trust herself and the founder. Later in the gymnasium, Bonnie introduced Catherine to Jennifer, another participant. The women watched as Keith Rainier and the other men bonded over volleyball. However, Catherine found it strange when everyone stood up to celebrate the founder's win. Afterward, Keith greeted Allison and Lauren, Nancy's daughter, with a kiss. Shortly, the founder was introduced to India. He then revealed he was a fan of Catherine, prompting him to wave at her. The following day, Allison discussed the Jane Ness module, focusing on Keith's perspective on male-female relationships. Nancy chimed in, explaining that men don't experience intimacy like women. Allison clarified that men often view intimacy as self-gratifying rather than a means of connection. She added that men tend to be more loyal than women because even after cheating, they often return to their wives, whereas women may leave their primary relationship after infidelity. Catherine questioned the group's concept of loyalty, defending that she was curious, not defiant. Suddenly, Keith intervened, prompting everyone to show respect. The founder then advised the actress that she was allowed to question the philosophy. The man admitted that he didn't have all the answers, but assured that he did women a great favor by identifying their flaws and weaknesses to help them grow. As the actress shook his hand, she felt bothered by his statement. That night, Catherine encountered Jennifer sleeping on the floor, who explained that she was doing it for penance because she was defiant to her husband. Bothered by this, she tried to convince India to leave the place. However, her daughter wanted to stay behind because she wanted to take more classes to improve herself. Catherine respected her decision and returned to Malibu. Allison invited India to greet her followers in a live stream the following day. Afterward, she revealed she was on a diet to boost mental clarity and energy. The coach explained that she needed to be even skinnier because it was what Keith preferred. She elaborated that being heavier would negatively impact the founder's energy field. Curious, India questioned if the founder said something like that, and Allison clarified he was her mentor and that she needed to check with him daily. While jogging later that day, Allison informed India that she could be a shadow coach soon. However, as part of the promotion, the team must focus on recruiting new members to build a network. Suddenly, they passed by a shop. Allison informed India that Keith was with Claire Bronfman, a financial supporter. She explained that the woman bought the building which they could turn into a cafe. Hearing this, India became excited since it was her dream, prompting Allison to share that it was Keith's way of giving back. Meanwhile, Elizabeth visited Catherine, whose divorce was officially processed. Later, they talked by the pool, and the older woman expressed her excitement for India's upcoming birthday celebration. Catherine revealed to her mom that India was becoming too attached to Nexium. She shared that India would get defensive when she criticized the organization. Despite her doubts about the group, she wanted to be a good mom and let her daughter find herself. Catherine's first husband, Bill, attended India's birthday party the following day. Later, after blowing out her candles, the celebrant thanked her attendees, including her mom and grandma. Then, for her birthday wish, she wanted everyone to join her in taking a Nexium workshop or to celebrate Keith's birthday week, which would only cost $2,000 with accommodation. Catherine was immediately bothered by this sudden recruitment, prompting her to invite everyone to eat the cake instead. That night, Lucas and Victoria confronted India, noticing a change in her since joining the group. However, India insisted that they attend the workshop with her. Later, Catherine admitted to her daughter that she didn't like her recruitment earlier. When she tried to invite her for a vacation, the celebrant revealed that she enrolled in the Nexium University, which costs $50,000 yearly. Catherine was immediately shocked at the rate, but her daughter clarified that she'd use her inheritance to pay for it. After India left, the actress felt concerned, but Bill advised her to let their daughter be a grown-up. On Keith's birthday week, the women gathered in the camp. Later, the founder spoke privately with India, offering to be her mentor. After she accepted, he advised her not to limit herself because of her femininity. The man held her shoulders, assuring her she'd find her higher purpose soon. Then, he kissed her, startling the woman. Noticing her reaction, Keith noted that it wouldn't happen again unless she wanted it to, prompting the member to laugh nervously. From afar, Bonnie saw them and appeared upset as she threw the trash. Later, a concerned Bonnie asked India what she had discussed with Keith. However, she lied and mentioned it was about a new secret project. At home, Remy and Francesca watched Keith's video on 
YouTube. Suspecting that their sister's in a cult. Concurrently, Catherine learned from Elizabeth that her daughter was working in a new cafe and coursework, making her feel that something was wrong with the group. Meanwhile, Allison recruited India to a secret sorority with a nexium called DOS, or Dominus Obsequious Sororium. The coach implied their lifetime of sisterhood or a vow of dedication. The member agreed to join. However, the coach warned her that there would be consequences if she betrayed the group. That night, a worried Bonnie wanted to raise concerns with Mark regarding India. However, he declined her request, reasoning that he was studying. She then drove alone and stopped by another house where the sorority ritual occurred. Inside, Allison prepared India for an initiation by removing her robe. Later, the member underwent branding, wherein she shrieked in pain as her sisters restrained her. Terrified, Bonnie immediately contacted Catherine and met her the next day in a cafe. The actress learned that her daughter was manipulated to join a secret slave master group called Dos, with Allison being India's master. Bonnie explained everything about the sorority and that Keith had the women on starvation diets and made them take unclothed photos. Additionally, the slaves had to sign away their possessions and undergo branding. When Catherine asked how she could get her daughter out, Bonnie recommended a cult deprogrammer. The following day, the actress met Melanie who advised her not to criticize the group because it would only make her daughter defensive. Following this, Catherine informed everything to Bill, who discovered that India's account was already wired to the cult. Afterward, the actress collaborated with her mom to investigate Keith's background. They learned that aside from the founder's high IQ, his first business was a pyramid scheme. Catherine tried to follow up with the FBI. However, Agent Latham advised the woman to gather concrete evidence before they could open an investigation. Following this suggestion, she contacted Frank Perlato, Nexium's former publicist who confirmed that the group was a scam. However, he faced a hundred lawsuits after quitting, which Keith's camp usually does to defectors and detractors. Frank shared that he knew about Keith's slaves, elaborating that the founder had multiple partners in bed. However, when he tried to expose the cult, the authorities ignored him. To help the woman further, he referred Catherine to a cult specialist. Arriving in the townhouse that night, India heard sensual noises from the bedroom. When she walked further, she saw Keith's glasses on the table, which silently shocked her. The following day, Catherine spoke with Rick, who admitted that the cult tried to silence him by suing him for 14 years. The specialist explained that Keith liked using deception and made people confess their deepest fears to use it against them. Hearing this, Catherine felt guilty because she was the one who got her daughter into the cult, but the man advised her not to blame herself because India was brainwashed. The actress shared her intent to go to the press. However, Rick advised her that she must be as systematic as Keith to take him down. After that, Catherine tried to reach out to her daughter. When she got no response, she called the New York Times. That night, India watched Allison and Keith dancing to music as she drank wine. Suddenly, Allison pulled her in to join them. When the founder touched her face, India abruptly excused herself to the bathroom. After India left, Keith reminded Allison that her slave must remove move her clothes to complete her assignment because he wanted her to pose for him and his camera. After this, he kissed the coach. Later when India returned, Allison told her that Keith had a special request. While walking downtown the following day, Catherine bought a newspaper and discovered that former Nexian coach Sarah exposed the group for their branding ritual. Meanwhile, Keith remained calm and unbothered upon seeing the news. Nancy considered using collateral against her and suggested that her team contact their lawyers. Knowing that Catherine was causing them trouble too, Allison assured every everyone that India was loyal to them. Later, Catherine met Sarah in a private room, where she revealed that Lauren manipulated her to join the sorority. The ex-cultist showed her branding, admitting she went ballistic after realizing it was the founder's initials, not a symbol. Following the revelation, Catherine screamed in frustration inside her car, unable to take in what had happened to her daughter. The following day after picking up her daughters from school, the actress got a call from Latham who confirmed that they'd finally investigate Nexium. Before dropping the call, the woman expresses her gratitude for such great news. When Remy asked what had happened, Catherine proudly declared they'd get India back because she had a plan. The actress then collaborated with Melanie and her mom to persuade India to return to Malibu for Elizabeth's birthday celebration. Catherine then picked up her daughter who was texting Allison the whole ride. In her messages, the coach urged her to slave to focus on recruitment to become a master. Arriving in Malibu, the actress told her daughter to put the phone away. However, India insisted that she needed to finish the text. Unable to resist herself, Catherine confronted India if she underwent branding. The woman confirmed, claiming that it was a good experience for her. When the concerned mom 
pointed out the cult's manipulation, India became upset, realizing that her mom took her for an intervention. Despite this, Catherine handed her the deprogrammer's calling card. However, the daughter denied being a part of any cult. Frustrated, India attempted to leave the car, but Catherine stopped her, disclosing that the FBI was investigating Nexium. Hearing this, India hurried to the house. Elizabeth then noticed the tension and hugged her daughter, who admitted that she'd screwed up the plan. Over the next few days, Catherine worked tirelessly to bring her brainwashed daughter back, appearing as a guest on radio and TV interviews. She condemned the actions of Nexium, expressing her desire to save others if she couldn't save India. India watched her mom on TV in Albany, but Allison immediately turned it off. The coach pressured the member to post on Facebook. She also started filming her, probing for Catherine's dark secret. Realizing the coach's desperation, the member got upset, declaring she didn't want to be involved anymore. Meanwhile, Nancy showed Keith a magazine article featuring Catherine. However, the founder seemed unfazed, asserting India's loyalty to the group. She warned that the media attention was posing a significant threat to their operation, but he reassured her, seeing the challenge as an opportunity for growth. Meanwhile, Catherine continued to cooperate with the FBI, providing them with falsified financial statements of Nexium's tax returns and testimonials from defectors and their families. Aware of the worsening situation, Nancy tasked her daughter Lauren with taking Keith to Mexico, giving her money for the trip. That evening, India noticed Allison packing and grew concerned that she was being abandoned. However, the coach reassured her that once everything was settled, she could join them. Before leaving, she advised her not to talk to anyone, especially the authorities. Allison, Lauren, and Keith arrived at Puerto Vallarta via a private jet the following day. Later, the coach observed the founder kissing Lauren's hand by the pool. Meanwhile, the cops apprehended Nancy who they caught destroying evidence. At the cafe, India received a text from Allison inviting her to fly to Mexico, but she disregarded it and focused on serving the customers. Soon, the authorities located Keith and the women, prompting the founder to run upstairs. However, he was quickly apprehended when they found him in the closet. At the cafe, India suddenly felt nervous and abruptly ended her shift. Agent Latham, observing her, approached her on the sidewalk and invited her to come with him for interrogation. Following this, Keith faced trafficking charges, forced labor, extortion, and racketeering. On the other hand, Allison was accused of actively recruiting slaves for DOS. Meanwhile, India didn't have charges which relieved Catherine. As a result, Allison Mack avoided trial by pleading guilty to racketeering and racketeering conspiracy charges, admitting her misjudgment about Keith's intentions. Nancy Salzman also pleaded guilty to racketeering conspiracy, confessing to hacking emails and destroying evidence. Claire Bronfman pleaded guilty to concealing an undocumented immigrant for financial gain, while Lauren Salzman admitted to racketeering conspiracy and enslaving a woman. Keith, the mastermind, was convicted on all counts against him and sentenced to life in prison. In his cell, he continued to reject victimhood as stated in his program's principles. Meanwhile, India returned to her family and reached out to the deprogrammer, ready to share her story. After her time in the cult, she took the opportunity to reflect, reconnect with loved ones, and write about her experiences with the hope of empowering others. The Catherine Oxenberg Foundation was built later on to prevent women from being exploited. The actress then helped the other defectors with exit counseling. Catherine explains that she shared her story to save her daughter. In her journey, she reveals that many vulnerable individuals are susceptible to predatory abuse and advocates for education on these issues. She urges parents who've lost children to cults to never give up on them. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.